This is Prime Crime Network. Take a look at this video. A parent facing charges of child abuse and neglect after allegedly helping his son beat up another child. Clark County School District Police say Jose Montez faces charges of child abuse and battery, accused of letting his son fight and then joining in. The fight happened Wednesday, April 14th, around 2 in the afternoon, near Dell H. Robison Middle School. The kid he's shown hitting is a 13-year-old. His mother, Melissa Rodriguez, heartbroken. Decides to just grab my son and smash him towards that fence and that sidewalk right there. It's just to see this area right now and knowing my son was like there defensive and not having anybody help him until towards the end, it's not fair. Police say this video shows Montez kicking the teen. She took to social media for justice and now hearing of his arrest. That is the best news ever received. <laughs> After two trips to the hospital, she says her son is recuperating with concussion-like symptoms. I'm just thanking God at this moment that my son is not dead because one, one, one wrong kick towards the head, it could kill somebody. First tonight, a crime crime network was exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. Bella's father showed up to the Harahan Police Department at 730 this morning to report his girlfriend and daughter missing. His other daughter, who is a couple years older, was still home and unharmed. But as police began investigating, they went to Bella's mother's home on Sedgefield Drive, which is about a block from her father's home on Donnellan Drive. That's when they found a 10 gallon bucket in the mother's yard and police say the little girl's remains were inside that bucket. Now the father's girlfriend, Hannah Landon, age 43, is being arrested for the murder. And because it's an important part of this case, we're going to share surveillance video with you from a neighbor. We do warn you, though, it is unsettling. Now the video shows a woman pulling a wagon who police identified as Landon with a bucket in it down the street around 930 last night. Now the coroner said this does appear to be a homicide, but the case or the cause of the child's death it has not been released at this point. Now by 2 p.m. today, police found the suspect Hannah Landon at a hospital. She is now in JPSO custody being questioned right now, and she faces a first degree murder charge. Now police say neither the father or mother of the child are believed to have been involved in her death. Now we know the child was a kindergartner at St. Matthew the Apostle School and the school sent an email to all of the parents today saying that because of this horrific tragedy they have canceled all classes tomorrow and Friday. Crime Crime Network it was exclusive. Hearing gunshots is like hearing a car go across the streets. I hate to say it but it's like I'm used to it growing up in St. Louis. The victim had been skateboarding here when the suspect approached. They exchanged words and then the suspect pulled out a gun following the victim here to the corner of 7th and Market Street, eventually killing him right here in cold blood. From up there, we could see the guy laying down on the ground. That was the sad part. Moultrie works in the PWC Pennant Building, where one of the bullets from the shooting cracked one of the building's windows. It's crazy that one of the bullets that from across the street and ended up hitting one of our buildings. A nearby car also catching stray bullets with the driver inside the car. Luckily, he escaped with no injuries. Police believe the afternoon shooting may have been premeditated. We're thinking it's a targeted attack since they engaged in a verbal um, altercation. Eyewitnesses off camera telling me the suspect stood over the victim unloading several rounds of ammo before running off north on 7th Street. Police do not yet have a description of the suspect. Crime Crime Network was exclusive. At least two boys under the age of 18 are the victims of sex crimes allegedly committed by 32-year-old John J. Brownlow. Court documents obtained by WREG today show Brownlow is facing eight charges, including especially aggravated sexual exploitation of a minor, aggravated stalking, and aggravated unlawful photographing of a minor. Brownlow was a school administrator at the Westminster Academy in Southwest Memphis at the time the crimes allegedly took place between June 2020 and July 2022. Right now, we don't know if the victims were students at the school, but the school says in a statement, quote, he has not been an employee or allowed on campus since that time, end quote. We went through the indictment page by page. One page alleges Brownlow directly induced the minor to engage in sexual activity. Another says he unlawfully and knowingly entered the home of a minor without effective consent. 
A third page among the most disturbing says Brownlow photographed the minor in a state of nudity for the purpose of sexual arousal or gratification. The document states the children did not know about the stalking or the cameras. Virginia Stallworth, executive director of the Memphis Child Advocacy Center, tells WREG in a statement, quote, research indicates two out of 10 Shelby County children are sexually abused by the age 18. We spoke on the phone with Leslie Ballin, Brownlow's attorney, and he says while these allegations are disturbing, the case is still pending and Brownlow maintains his innocence. First tonight, a crime crime network was exclusive, was exclusive, was exclusive. It broke my heart. It makes me want to cry. This Westfield High School teacher asked not to be identified out of fear of retaliation from Spring ISD. Still, she says she felt compelled to speak out after the assistant principal here suffered a brutal beatdown while trying to break up a fight. Three or four other kids jump in on her and just pummel her to the ground and they are kicking her and pulling her hair. The assistant principal had to be rushed to the hospital. She loves those kids. She is the nicest person. And she's the best administrator that we have at Westfield High School. Spring ISD released a statement that partly reads, quote, all students involved in the altercation will be subject to the full extent of disciplinary action available. We take these issues very seriously as the safety of our students and staff is our highest priority. There will be no tolerance for any altercations or disruptions to learning, end quote. But this teacher says that simply isn't true. When you call for help to the front office, it's nobody ever shows up. Adding the entire campus only has two officers. We don't feel safe. Faculty don't feel safe and parents, if the parents knew how unsafe the inside of the school is, they would be upset. We're not really sure how long the assistant principal is going to have to stay in the hospital. Her father says she's suffering from excruciating head pain that will need to be constantly monitored. She's also going to need a CAT scan. Crime, crime network. It was exclusive. It's just crazy. Like, y'all are shooting with innocent people around. A mother is frantic. Her five-year-old daughter in the hospital right now recovering from a gunshot wound to the eye. Doctors will perform surgery on her today while athens Clark County Police continue this investigation. A young life altered. One moment, this innocent child is warming up for dance class. The next, she is on the floor bleeding. Brittany Wright had just dropped her five-year-old daughter, Nevaeh, at an Athens dance studio and was at her car when she heard it happen. So I probably opened the door to get out, you hear gunshots. I heard like four or five gunshots. And I see people running, I see people getting in cars. She raced back to the studio and found her daughter injured, bleeding. I'm just screaming and hollering. It was traumatic because to see the injury, to see the blood, to see everything, I didn't know what to do. Nevea is now at Children's Health Care of Atlanta. The injury to her eye will require surgery and, according to the family, the possibility of a transplant. Police reports state that surveillance cameras at a nearby business captured two men getting into an argument, then a shootout. One of the bullets shattered the glass of the dance studio. In addition to Nevea's injury, a 14-year-old was hit in the arm. They're thinking that the little girl was trying to block my baby from getting hit and it like bounce from her or bounce from my baby to her. Brittany Wright by her daughter's hospital bed is still frantic. The bullet was actually like two inches from going to her brain. It's just crazy like y'all are shooting with innocent people around like broad daylight. Thank you for watching Prime Crime Network, your source for urban and suburban and around the world news. Hit the subscribe, like, and the notification bell. And check us out on primecrimenetwork.com.